Yeah, Game of Thrones. It's a uh fucking terrible right now, isn't it? I was going back and forth about whether or not I should do this video because I haven't done a video in a really long time because work has just gotten so busy and I'm working on my revisions for my book and on other projects and so I just didn't really feel like I had a lot of time to commit to making like a really like to really do anything but like with the recent discourse around Game of Thrones really popping off because of the trash fire that has been uh, the last episode and has permeated through the season, considering that one of the, the biggest things that like I used to talk about on this channel was Game of Thrones, I felt like I wanted to at least talk about it a little bit and talk about my feelings about this latest season and how like even though I am annoyed by the choice that they're making and I'm like actually quite furious about some of it, I am not surprised because this season and this latest episode is just an example of the bad riding chickens coming home to roost because deadass if we're talking about the failure of understanding character the failure of understanding dynamics in the game of thrones universe this shit has been happening since season two and if we're being really real about it it's been happening since they made catelyn the one to like beg ned to stay home instead of telling him to go and try to protect um Robert in King's Landing. This is really a culmination of all the things that like people have been saying is wrong about the way D&D &D have adapted the series coming to fruition. Like people are, so there are people who are pissed about like Arya killing the Night King, the Ice King, whatever fuck his name is in the show. And like personally, I don't care. I'm not a Jon Snow fan. I, I've never really cared for him in the books, in the show, whatever. But everyone's like, that was Jon's arc and that was Jon's story and that was Jon's purpose. And like, what would his purpose be now that like this happened? And like, why did Arya get to have the storyline and not Jon? And I'm sitting here like, oh, oh, you mean like how in season two, when people were like, they are removing all of Sansa's fucking storylines and giving Arya extra stuff so she can see even more about it that it's not canonical to her story. You mean like that shit? That stuff that we were saying was fucked up. Not because there's nothing wrong with Arya. Like, I love Arya as a character. I like Maisie Williams. And again, I don't care that like Arya killed the Night King. But this is an example of what we were talking about, about giving Arya more things to do to make her seem more biased because she was the only female character that they were truly invested in because she was a female character through which they could bounce all their like badass cliche things on and this is what happens when you prioritize coolness over character development and coolness over understanding how this show is attempting to deconstruct uh fantasy narratives and not just there to do shock value because that's the thing too about their explanation about why they chose Arya like from a narrative perspective it doesn't it makes sense to me why Arya would be the one because she's a trained assassin she's a badass bitch like it's a cool moment and it does subvert in a sense the idea that like the prince who is promised must always be like the one who's the, you think is the folks of the prophecy like if you know anything from like mythology prophecies are bullshit prophecies don't really matter like the chosen one is never really living up to his expectations and so john and daenerys not being the chosen ones makes sense to me and i think it's cool they picked Arya, someone who has a lot of those chosen one characteristics who could be the protagonist of her own series without any other character being the hero i think that makes sense but when they're like oh we did it for like shock value it's like oh right because you're not really thinking and this they have done repeatedly with sansa like people were upset about sansa's line to sandra clay the hound about how like if she hadn't gone through all these experiences with ramsey and littlefinger she would still be a little bird now, as people, have, as people have pointed out, when you are a, a person who is a victim of assault, you know, how you deal with that, how you heal, how you choose to feel about it is your own feelings because you are a person. Sansa is a character. Not only is she a character, but the assault that happened to her was not canonical to the books at the point that uh, this storyline would have appeared. If something happened in the future, I don't know about that. All I know is that, like, it was not her in the books. 
and their whole explanation from jump was like we did this to make her stronger and everyone was like that is fucking sexist that is fucking s ridiculous because Sansa was getting stronger through experiences that you did not put on screen she was getting stronger through relationships and and storylines that you did not give us because you wanted to take away all that stuff and give it to Arya or give it to Tyrion or reduce it when it should have been mattering and the only way you could find a way to like bring it up full circle was like okay we'll have her be assaulted and then you know we'll have her be strong from that and this is again bad writing coming home to roost because now they're doing the same thing with Danny and the thing about with the Danny storyline is is that like fans of color you know black and brown women of color have been saying since like the beginning even from in the books that there's a lot of very imperialistic colonial aspects about Danny's role in A Song of Ice and Fire and the show that she is like the whitest of white ladies coming around all around Essos and all of these like ambiguously brown places and giving and bringing her white justice and burning whoever she thinks she is. People have been talking about how that's an issue and the books are like a little bit better about you know highlighting that she herself is very ignorant how her cultural ignorance puts her in these difficult situations and that she is both you know she is a savior but she's a savior for her own means and that there is like this like she's a complicated character Danny whether you like her whether you don't like her she's a complex character and which is why I enjoy her despite any critiques that I have about her role as a white savior in in the universe but we have been saying from jump that it is problematic that she's doing this shit. But no one cared, right? No one cared that like she was slashing and burning all the Essos. No one cared that she was like destroying like all the the all the Dothraki heritage, forcing them through her idea of to like fight for a land that doesn't belong to them, taking all these unsullied and brown people and dragging them to a place where they ain't fucking wanted. Like we even said that those were all things that like showed that she had problems in rulership that would affect her as someone who would be leading in Westeros. And they have decided to not only like slaughter you know all of the brown people they can have in the show including Masande, which fuck y'all for that that was trash the way you did it was trash her dying expected that expected Grey Worm to die as well but how they did it was trash and now people are like and now it's like oh she's mad because she wants to burn forces that are like disobeying her and is like trying to do all this shit and I'm just like one she has three dragons of course she's gonna burn people her sigil is a dragon and the words of the Targaryens is fire and blood everything about how they're handling Daenerys and her burning and her having dragons and then having Tyrion and Viserys be like incompetent turds but trying to make it seem like she's the bad person for feeling the way that she feels is like gaslighting writing 101 and we should have known they were gonna do this because who they did this to? Stannis. Who were they doing this in the beginning? Stannis. And this is and people who like Stannis were like they got his character wrong they don't understand his whole mentality they're not presenting it in a really constructive way they're just making him look crazy for crazy sake and look at what happened again. It's almost like they were always bad and y'all didn't care because it wasn't characters that you guys liked. Anyway um you know it's been very rough to watch Danny like come to Westeros be told by everyone to be like like you know girl just be chill just be nice you know we don't want you coming here kill all these lovely white chimneys and stuff you know and like we just don't want you to like you you slashed and burned in, in that place we accepted that because you you gangster like that we, we saw that and we're like cool she's killing people we don't care about but now you're in our territory and we would like you to not burn people and I'm like but that's her mo like that's all she's been doing and you were backing her up that entire time and now you're like oh if you burn king's landing now you're a mad woman and mind you this is in conflict with cersei who don't give not one solitary fuck but daenerys is the mad person even though Tyrion's plans is garbage even though Varys's plans are garbage even though if daenerys had from the very fucking beginning just been up there in the dragon's pit and was like you know what i'm gonna eat cersei and we're gonna be done that'd be it but you want to know why they didn't do that you want to know why we're doing all this bullshit and why all this stuff is happening Tyrion. and you want to know why that shit is happening because they haven't written Tyrion properly since 
season two. Like, Tyrion in the books is a morally gray, kind of douchey character. Like, he did try to do all this weird stuff with Sansa. His relationship with Shay is a lot more fucked up in the books. And all of it highlights that he is someone who has a lot of entitlement, especially to female bodies. And, like, he's a complex character. And at the point in the books where, like, he has, like, left, like, after, you know, he kills Tywin, his mentality towards Cersei is that he wants to, like, kill and rape her. Like, he hates Cersei. There is absolutely no way that Tyrion would be like, oh Cersei, you love your children, you dead all dead now, partly because of you, you know Cersei, you're just secretly, like I know that you care. Like, and first of all, for him to do that once was trash. But then Cersei betrayed y'all and was like waiting to scout to like to destroy y'all. And then you do it again? You do it again and to be like, Cersei, your child is like Tyrion. She don't fuck with you. She never fuck with you. Why do you think that you can say this stuff? And it's like, oh, because they've been trying to write Tyrion to be like this great noble character, which is not integral to who he is. And therefore, instead of being the smart game maker who knows people and knows how to work them, he's being this person who's like, ah, oh, my sister, I care about my sister. And it's like, no, you don't. Fuck Cersei. For Cersei, like, you know, and I fucking love that I love Cersei in the show. I think of all the adapted characters, she's probably the best one. But it's like, Cersei don't give a fuck. And, and the very fact that, that they have neutered Tyrion's darkness is the reason why he's not a good advisor now. Like, he's, he's trying to protect the Lannister line, and it's like, but bro, we're trying to break the wheel. Y'all can't be saving these noble houses and trying to act as though, like, it's ridiculous to you that, like, a queen who whose family was forced out violently by the same noble houses that are here today is gonna be coming up in here and be like I spare you it's cool it's fine it doesn't make any sense and then to like constantly batter down Danny with like she forgot about the Iron Fleet even though like she talked about it like two seconds ago and they changed it so that like the dragons all of a sudden like they can just get like hit mad instantaneously because dragons like dragons that have matured their scales are supposed to be like indestructible like and in flight like and the idea that Danny could not see this massive fleet of ships it wasn't prepared for it as she's going to Dragonstone knowing how close it is to King's Landing it's just it just is such bad writing. The same bad writing of how it was weird about how Arya had ja had the guy in Harrenhal who could kill people but didn't kill Tywin when he was right there. Oh right, because that was bullshit that was made up for the show and didn't make no fucking sense. And I think that's kind of like why I am both like frustrated by this season because it's like this is the conclusion that we have to many of these stories. This is going to be the conclusion that we may only get. Who knows? Because I think George R. R. Martin is probably bored with the franchise. It's cool. We have fan fiction. Life will go on. But it's like, the reason why I came back is because I didn't have book material anymore. And I wanted to know what happened to Sansa. I wanted to know what happened to Arya. I wanted to know what happened to these characters. I wanted to see their fates. And to see it be handled so sloppily isn't surprising but it is disappointing and it's extra disappointing because the writing has been on the wall for so long but people did not care because it wasn't affecting characters that they felt were important like I may not like Jon Snow but getting Jon Snow's story right is important to the larger narratives of the books like Danny, not a character that I used to love I've kind of warmed on her more especially because I just love Amelia Clark and I think that she's like doing really good work this season and like I it upsets me that they are not gonna get the storylines that they deserve as characters who have made it to this point like and the fact that also they just are framing Danny in such a a bad way that it really bothers me like I don't mind her and Sansa not getting along I think that conflict is fine the way that they are talking about John like when they were like John has an has an even temperament and a cock and I'm just like oh is it 2020 election like what the fuck is going on here like oh Danny's on her period so she can't be queen like what's going on what's really happening here like it was just so 
fucking frustrating. And the fact that John is truly a fool. Like, John is not qualified. He's not a good leader. Not in the shows, at least. He is. He has failed so many times. He's been, like, saved out by other people. Was killed by his own fucking people. Like, John is not all that guys for y'all to be like oh fuck Daenerys we gotta get this other guy out here who cares if she's struggling and suffering and we failing and we getting all her shit killed she should just be nice she should just be kind and I'm just like miss me with that bullshit like this scene where like Danny is telling the John like don't tell anyone and he's just like I have to tell my family and I'm just like why nigga why do you need to tell anybody like what is this for? Your dad, excuse me, your uncle literally had a whole bit of his marriage be like kind of dissolved for a long time to keep a promise to your mama about keeping you safe. But you feel some like weird obligation to have to like tell Sansa, who has made it very clear she don't fuck with Danny, that you're, you know, a potential heir to the throne. That we don't get to see that on screen. Choices. And it's just like, Danny's concerns are legitimate, but they are framing it in a way of like, look how selfish she is to only care about her claim to the Iron Throne. <laughs> Shouldn't she care about the people? And I'm just like, she cares about herself. Daenerys is entitled. Yes. But everyone on this show is a noble, okay? With, exception, with a few exceptions, everyone here is either like a, a lord, a lady, a knight. Like entitlement are us but all of it every single time it's always Danny's so entitled Danny so this Danny so that Danny has three dragons Danny lost all her troops coming in here to do this bullshit with y'all Danny fucking brought all and her people were at the front lines of the entire goddamn thing while y'all people was fucking chilling like why wasn't the wildlings up front they the ones who in the cold all the time let them bees in the trap <sighs> it's just it's just it's just it's so it's just it's a lot of bullshit that just highlights that the show wasn't really equipped to be a deconstructional show which I'm only saying that word in that because that is what A Sound of Ice and Fire does it plays with your expectations because of the way that we're used to certain tropes working out not necessarily for shock value those are two different things like it's only it's only shocking because we're just not used to seeing narratives be brave in who they kill and who they allow to be the hero, who they allow to be the point of view. Like, like what was, you know, surprising and radical about Game of Thrones, um, A Song of Ice and Fire, excuse me, was that like, Catelyn was the POV, not Rob. That Davos was the POV, not Stannis. Those were the things that were radical and interesting and you know twisty about Game of Thrones that we're not seeing these people through like they're like through the leaders we're seeing it through the mothers through the like feminine princesses through the advisors those were the things that made this show interesting and I think even to a degree George kind of lost this as he went along and didn't give certain perspectives to other people but I feel as if the show just never got that that was important about Game of Thrones and as a result like the things that were already problematic in the books became exponentially more problematic in the show especially with the, like the Dothraki like the Dothraki got completely screwed over and how they were you know seen and I think the most telling example of that was like I was talking to a friend of mine who also has read the books and watched the show and I was talking about how like it's just such bullshit that when you compare the Dothraki to the free folk the free folk are kind of treated as like better than the Dothraki even though they have like the exact same energy except they cold and the Dothraki is in the warmth like the wildlings the free folk they are also raping people they are also like a free people with their own culture, their own sense of civilization. They are also super patriarchal. They have all the same problems that the Dothraki have, but the free folk have been humanized and given voices and given perspectives that have been allowed to survive. And, you know, the Dothraki didn't really get that, you know? And even when we had Missande, you know, aged up to be like, you know, hot and shit. Um, 
that character got to do a lot but then gets killed and in such an unsatisfactory way only there to like give Danny props and doesn't get to die like independently like I know a lot of people were like if she had gotten to die like jumping off herself they would have been happier with that and I agree like I know not everyone is mad about it I've seen like um some writers that I like who are black not have a problem with it and I again my word is not law. I'm not saying that you can't disagree, but I just think it's not that specific thing. It's the the line that we get to, that we go through to get there. We don't have any other people of color on women of color on this show that got to do anything that didn't just get to die. Like I mean, again, since season two, they would invent black people and brown people and kill them off when they were alive in the books. We said this. We said it was annoying then, and it's still annoying now. And because more, most people were just calling us like whiny little book cunts, like no one was listening. And now that all of the things that they did not know how to handle then are still coming across now, except that because we have like the cast is so condensed, it now is going to be affecting the core characters that people enjoy. And like Sansa is at the end of her story arc. Like this energy that she has is going to be her energy through the whole thing. But like Jon, Danny, Tyrion, like, you know, all these people are going to be dealing with like their characters having to be swayed and altered from what they were supposed to be to fit these new perspectives. And the more that happens, the more people are going to be aware that like it's kind of bullshit that you guys are like treating Danny with like all of this expectation of like goodness and altruism when like like the thing the, the biggest thing that you realize when you like watch the show and read the books is that like the people of Westeros are trash. Tywin Lannister was like I will burn the reach I will fuck up all of everyone I will send the mountain to rape and pillage whoever the fuck I want. That is what the small folk have been dealing with from jump. Right now, whether they put John as king, Danny as queen, whoever the fuck, like, they will be participating in a society that has been slashing and burning its small people for the sake of war from jump. And the idea that Danny needs to be nobler because if she's not like what one of my friends said was like if she like burns everything to defeat Cersei she'll be just as bad as Cersei and I'm like then how do you want to take King's Landing then fam like here's the thing too is like while we can talk about imperialism and like the, the idea of like military stuff in like a theoretical way this is still a fictional ass world and as far as I'm concerned like the people of King's Landing like they are not benefiting anything from this hodgepodge idea of like, you know, Cersei has brought them all to King's Landing and used them as like body shields. Like, Cersei doesn't give a shit. And when you have an enemy who doesn't care, doesn't give a shit, you're gonna lose every time unless you bring that same energy. There is no way to fight a despot with peace when she's willing to put children as like her body shields. Cersei is evil. Cersei is an evil fucking bitch. That's why we love her. If you don't want Danny to be an evil bitch too, valid, but you also can't take away her ability to fight. Like you neutered her resources. You've put her in a position of feeling completely isolated. So she, so that was like her, her advisors being bad. It's also making her feel like she has to double down her choices to show a strong beta force. And there's no sympathy. Y'all killed Jorah. You killed Missande. Grey Worm can't help nobody because he's traumatized. What's Jon gonna do? Hmm? What's Tyrion gonna do? What's Varys gonna do? And I think, like, tomorrow we'll see the repercussions of this. But I just... I don't expect anything positive to come from Danny's storyline. I don't. Because here's the thing. Even if like everything ends and like Cersei's not on the throne, Day's not on the throne. Like Sonic gets to be Lady of Winterfell. Poss that might be that possibly, right? But we will have had two female queens both be portrayed as mad, crazy, emotional bitches who need to like be replaced by smart, rational bet and it's like cool 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 i'm glad that that's the message that we'll be ending the series with like you know and and it's like 
I remember the thing that people said about Danny, like that she has a gentle heart. And I think that there are ways to end her storyline. I think there is ways for her to be the Mad Queen that are fulfilling and interesting and really like and really explore what it means to like have been brought up in a sense of privilege and to have a gentleness that is beaten out of you in its own way. You know, like Sansa did not become crueler because she became colder but not crueler because she had a, a solid family unit because she was raised in love and in kindness. They didn't have that. She didn't have that and that's why they are the way they are. That is not being explored. It's just more like her father was crazy therefore she must also be and it's like okay I just you know and Varys especially with his whole thing I'm like you talk about temperament like you know Robert Baratheon called y'all cunts to y'all face and drank himself to a stupor Tywin Lannister done slash and burn everything y'all had incest child number one be a tyrant you had incest child number three you know be so incompetent that he allowed his mother to you know bring in the faith you know that fucking storyline and now you have Cersei who is a monster but Danny is getting fast-tracked to villainy like that and it's it's frustrating to watch again it's just bad writing trickling that got to like fail upward and now it's here and now all it can do is ruin the stuff that y'all like. And it's upsetting and I hate it. Um, I'm still gonna watch because I wanna see how it ends. And, it, and and to be fair, like, even though I feel like, not vindicated, because that's not the wrong word, because there's no vindication in having characters you enjoy be fucked over. But it, it, I feel like at least the illusion that like this show was like consistent in anything is slowly being like, like I don't think the show is terrible. I'm not gonna go that far. It is a well done show. It has had amazing actors, has amazing moments. You know, it's one of my, it's a franchise that I love. It's a fandom that I've been very happy to be a part of overall. But the show very quickly exposed itself and how it handled its female characters, how it handles characters color, the way it handled characters like Loris, like, they turn Loras from a character who is supposed to be the Tyrell equivalent of Jamie, except not terrible, and they turn him into a fop because that was an easier stereotype for them to work with. You know, they made the Faith Militant anti-gay when that was not the way they were in the books because that was just the most cliche thing that they could think of. Like, they, they turn Marjorie from a character who was, like, weaponizing femininity the same way that, like, Sansa didn't know how to but made her an older sex pop because that was easier for them to do like at every turn they have always taken the lazy route and now we're getting that again and I'm just glad that people are seeing it and that they're calling it out and that no matter what happens next when we go through the discourse about Game of Thrones as a whole, people will be able to say like, oh, these things that happened in these seasons was an indicator of the kind of writing we were going to be getting then. We just didn't realize it now because we didn't see it in its full scope. So we will see when the finale airs what happens. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys have been thinking about it because like, for especially those who have enjoyed this season and have enjoyed the way things have gone I would like to know because I think that you know it's a big enough fandom everyone's got feelings but I want to know what you guys have to say and if you do miss hearing me talk about stuff I'm sorry that I haven't been able to do it recently I will be uh working on doing some more stuff soon it's just been a lot and I really don't know the direction to take this channel you know it's just very difficult because like I do so much writing in like my day life about pop culture so I'm just not sure what angles to take for this site but I'm gonna figure it out because I do miss having something separate from like my work writing to like be creative about so we will see but uh let me know what you guys think about this you know the drill that we're supposed to say like subscribe engagement and then of course like Feel free to, to and I'm all, I'm very active on Twitter now, so I'm going to put my Twitter down below. Like, I would love for you guys to talk to me on that. And if you have any suggestions about stuff that you do want me to talk about, whether it be fandom related or, like, other stuff, 
let me know because if this works I think I'm just gonna just do like 30 minute once a week videos about something so we will see and I will definitely be doing a video on the finale because I got to.